Okay, so this is going to be the calculus AP, AB test questions 23 and 24. Um, and number 23 says the following. It says if the limit as x approaches, uh, basically to find the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 sine x cosine x minus sine x over x squared. Um, again, the first thing you should try to do with these limits is simply plug in x equals 0. But you can check that you'll get 0 over 0. Um, you could use L'Hopital's rule if, you, if you've seen L'Hopital's rule. Um, <clears throat> a couple limits, though, that you'll want to be aware of. Um, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, this actually turns out to be 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 of um, 1 minus cosine x over x, this equals 0. Okay, so a couple useful little identities. We're actually going to use those in this case um, as well. Okay, so how are we going to use these? Well, the first thing I would do is simply factor the 4 out front um, just to get rid of that. And then notice we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0. The top has a sine x. Um, in both factors, or excuse me, in both terms, so we can factor that out and make it sine x times cosine x minus 1 all over x squared. And with limits, you can look at them, you can basically do them a piece at a time, you can break them up as a product. So I'm going to break this up as sine x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x. <clears throat> okay, we saw that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. We just now just saw, well, we didn't justify it, but this limit equals 1. <clears throat> so the question is, we saw that 1 minus cosine x equals 0. Notice I can factor um, a negative out of the top. I could factor a negative out of the top and then simply have 1 minus cosine x over x. But again, we could just simply pull this new negative out front, all the way out front, wherever we want to. And now, again, we have this other limit, 1 minus cosine of x um, over x. We saw that this limit actually turns into 0. So really, this whole limit, um, when we break it up, we would get negative 4 times 1 times 0, or 0 will be our answer. So again, those two identities at the beginning with sine x over x and cosine x over x, you'll want to know those for sure. Okay, the next problem here, number 24, um, it says if the derivative of y with respect to x um, equals 3x squared plus 2 over y, and it says y equals 4 when x equals 2, it says then when x equals 3, y equals what? That's what we're trying to figure out here. Okay, so this is going to turn out to be um, a separable differential equation. So we're trying to figure out information about the original function y. So we know about the derivative, so we'll just simply have to integrate that to, to get it back for us. Um, just jot this down. Okay, so remember with a separable differential equation, what you do is you try to put all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other. And we can achieve that just by cross multiplying. I would get y dy on the right side. We would get 3x squared plus 2 dx. And then the point is, um, once we have our variables separated out, we just integrate both sides. Okay, so if we integrate y dy, we're going to get y squared over 2. And if we integrate 3x squared, we would get 3x cubed um, over 3, or simply x cubed would be our antiderivative. And then the antiderivative of 2 would be 2x. Um, it doesn't matter which side you do it, but you have to stick an arbitrary constant um, on one side or the other. And now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out this constant by using our first bit of information. So it says y equals 4 when x equals 2. So we'll plug um, 4 in for y and 2 in for x, and then solve for c. <clears throat> On the left, we'll get 16 over 2, or 8. 2 cubed is 8. 2 and 2 is 4. 
So on the right side, we would get 12. If we take 8 minus 12, we'll get negative 4 as our c value. Okay, so now we can just simply replace our c value with negative 4. And now they simply want us to figure out the value of y when x equals 3. So we'll now plug in our new bit of information that x is 3. So we'll get 3 cubed plus 2 times 3 minus 4. <coughs> um, 3 cubed is uh, 27. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 2 and 3 is 6 minus 4. Again, we'll have y squared over 2 on the left. Okay, so I think we're almost there now. Just a matter of simplifying um, down our arithmetic. So 27 and 6, that's 33. 33 minus 4 is going to be 29. If we multiply both sides by 2, we'll get that y squared equals 58. And now we simply need to solve for y. So if we take the square root of both sides, we'll simply get positive negative the square root of 58. Um, and I guess you could try to maybe break that down. Um, they don't bother to do this at all. <clears throat> um, they just leave it. Um, they actually only give you the one solution, the positive square root of 58. So um, <clears throat> would that make sense as well? And actually, <clears throat> okay, I think from our original problem, no, okay, this is okay. So they do give you the answer, just only square root of 58. They don't give you the other option as well um, on this one. So, all right, there's another two down. Um, we've got a couple more to go on the first half of the A-B test. Again, on these te uh, questions, you're not allowed to use a calculator. Um, so just make sure your arithmetic's up to speed. Um, and I don't know, if you have any questions, feel free to post them. Hopefully me or somebody else can help you out.